Now, as you can see, we have Donegal's most decorated footballer, uh, Carl Lacey, in studio with us because he's on the 2019 panel for the Electric Ireland GAA Minor Star Awards. The panel also includes Alan Kearns, who you'll know, Derek McGrath, and uh, Mossy Quinn as well. The award's in their third year now, and they are a cornerstone of Electric Ireland's sponsorship of the GAA All-Ireland Minor Championship. And you can follow the campaign on Twitter, at Electric Ireland, and use the hashtag GAA This Is Major. Carl Lacey, you're very welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. As well as everything else in your life, you're going to have to keep an eye on the minor championship too. Yeah, yeah. Actually, looking forward to it. It's, um, I think, the minor level. It's it's an age group where you know, tactics aren't as much, and it's more free flowing football, and young lads get to express themselves. So it's always an exciting. Um, they're exciting games to watch, and I'm actually looking forward to now seeing who comes up trumps and who's the best in the country and, um, and we'll, we'll see what happens. This is before defensive coaches like you get their hands <laughs> on them and ruin them. Just take the joy out of the game. That's exactly yes. that's <laughs> the way I was going with it there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, congratulations of the weekend. We'll get into all that. I was just doing a bit of reading about you. One of the more interesting things I saw, don't know if it's true or not, is that when you won the All-Ireland in 2012, Arsene Wenger sent you a letter of congratulations. Is that right? Not the most interesting thing about me. It was one of the more interesting things I didn't know. Oh, right, right. Uh, yeah. Um, not bad. That's a nice I, touch. It was, yeah. No, I don't know how genuine that was from Arsene Wenger himself, but uh, I received a letter, yeah, obviously of, of contacts over at Arsenal. I've been over um, at their training centre a few times, mm. um, and they always, the, the guys know that I followed them fairly close and they organised that Arsenal would send me a letter of congratulations when we won Ireland so it was nice to have and I think it's actually in the Crow Park J Museum at the moment so yeah. I must get it back off them. Was this as part of your Masters in High Performance at Limerick that you were over there? Uh, yeah, so I was doing my Masters in Limerick and I had to do placement as part of it so I um, got in contact with uh, Desmond Ryan who's a uh, Galway man, who's, he's over there and, he's in, and he says, yeah, no problem, he took me over on a two-week placement, so I spent two weeks over there in their high-performance academy, um, shadowing the coaches and getting an overview of everything that goes on at Arsenal. What did you take away from that? Uh, just uh, took away, I suppose, the resources that they have, you know, compared to what we have, mm. um, you know, the levels that they go to in terms of their detail, um, you know, coming in every morning getting their checks their medical checks done you know before they go training um, so if they're not ready to train or if they didn't yeah, sleep just, well yeah you know, just more or less screen from head to toe you know get, getting blood samples taken hydration urine you know seeing exactly well is this guy fit to train is he fit to give it 100% now and we go out to the training ground for an hour is he at the level um, I suppose it's, it happens in the GA too but probably at a smaller scale. Yeah. Um, Piss in a bucket there and I'll have a look at it. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> More or less. Um, but yeah, just, just the levels of detail that they go into. But again, the resources they have. You know, and you're trying to take any little wee bit that you can that they do. Well, you know, we could do that there. Maybe it's not as fancy. It mightn't be on 20 iPads, but mm. we could do pen and paper. You know, if it's a readiness to train, if it's a questionnaire, five questions, how did you sleep, mm. what's your hydration, what's your stress levels. You know, all them little things that you begin to play in your own little way. Mm. I suppose what strikes you as well when you're over at these places is very quickly you realise they are all just very normal people. Yeah, oh absolutely, yeah. And you know, your stars struck maybe for the first five minutes, but then when you maybe have conversations with them, you know, they're normal, they're yeah. they're nobody different. Um, they do the exact same things that we do, you know, gym sessions, recovery sessions, you know, their foam rollers the same as our foam roller, their ice baths are the same, like they're not, they're just normal people. Like. And as quality of athletes when you're just even I don't know, observing training or watching them sprint over 10, 15 yards, are they at a different level to what you're coming across in GA from a physical point of view? Uh, yeah, you do. That's one thing that you would, would stand out is their sharpness and their you know, the speed and the agility that the guy, th these guys have. You know, they are medically looked after the best. Um, you know, and do you feel it's more medical care than just genetics? Um, it's, yeah, I'd say more medical. Um, it's more kind of, they'll not train until they're 100 percent so you know them checks i'm talking about you know their hamstring strength their groin strength you know everything has to be right. nailed on perfect before they go out on the training ground and then obviously that makes them be able to train better whereas maybe in the ga hamstring test oh you're a wee bit low but you're still training tough luck we need mm. to train in tonight mm. you know and performance wise then we are not you know as medically fit 
and yeah. for purpose and what you're supposed to be doing. Like, and that so. takes a toll, I presume. And then yeah. that's where the injuries come then, and yeah. you know, they get fatigued, and then they come off the training ground, they're worse, mm. and then over training again Thursday night, get yourself ready, do whatever you can, mm. because we need you again Thursday night, you know, our games in two weeks' time, yeah. you know, and it just all catches up. This uh, Masters in High Performance in uh, Limerick in 2014? 2014, yeah, yeah. What were you doing up until that point? How does this fit into your life? Um, I was I was working in the bank. I was with Ulster Bank, um, and I think that was a career that suited me at the time. Um, I got a job in Donegal, suited me for training, yeah. and that was you know, that's a lot of thinking behind a lot of GA players. Just something. Do Secondary something. school, primary school, bank, all these kind of areas. Yeah, just do something that's yeah. close to home that allows you maybe to clock off at five o'clock, get the training pretty early. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not too demanding in terms of physical work. You know, you're sitting at a desk, and it suited me at the time to mm. do. Like, I wanted to play for Donegal. I wanted to achieve with Donegal, mm. and that suited me at the time. And did you find it drudgery or not too bad? Or when did you start to think this is fine and I am playing for Donegal, which is good? However, I've got the rest of my life to think about here. Yeah. When, yeah, when did those thoughts creep in? Yeah, they started maybe it was 27, 28. Um, you know, when I was filling out my CEO form, I wanted to be a P teacher, um, but points academically I wasn't able to get into the UP teaching. Mm. They're high weren't they? They're like four or five hundred four yeah, points? Four Limerick five, was 500 yeah. or yeah. I think I got four to five or something like that right. so it wasn't too far away. Yeah. Um, being sarcastic there by the way. There should be a some kind of physical test you can do. I think P is coming it's in. It's in now. Is yeah, it in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's in now which is great but um, yeah I wanted to be involved in sport in some way. There's not many careers in it like but I suppose 27, 20, I thought, nah, now's the time mm. if I'm going to go do something here, I need to get it done. So I looked at um, a few options. Michael Fenley had done the course just the year before me in Limerick, and I spoke to him, and he says, yeah, go for it, it's a great course, and um, I did it. And kind of a few doors opened up, then I got into lecturing, so right. on the other side of the desk. So you're lecturing people in high performance? It's in uh, sports coaching and performance, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And are you enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, loving it, yeah. Do you still have an inkling to go and work in a professional sports setup in an ideal world, or are opportunities just too few and far between? Yeah, no, there's not opportunities around home. Like, um, yeah, I'm based in Donegal, so you know, as you say, they're. Ulster rugby would be about the closest. Ulster rugby, yeah, yeah. Setup, would it? Yeah, probably would be, yeah. Or a League of Ireland yeah. team with a big budget, and there aren't many there's of them. There's not around. many of them around, yeah. But listen, the GA is as as professional as elite as you're going to get but it's going to be voluntary so yeah you know, I'm, that's what i'm doing at the moment i'm really enjoying it and building up loads of experience doing that so you know i'm happy there along with my full-time job in lyt and gone from a bank to walking into a lecture hall to lecture a bunch of strangers adults so you're cacking it the first few times you do that uh, yeah still <laughs> still yeah. cacking it how do you get good at that how do you get used to that uh, listen, i suppose it's like anything else you know you gotta just you gotta come out of your comfort zone you know, and I'm, I'm probably I'm, I have been somebody like that from day one, where I'm not afraid to do that. Um, you know, you got to make mistakes. You got to just put yourself out there. You're not going to learn other ways. Mm. Um, do I know everything in terms of sports science, high performance? I wouldn't say so, no. Um, but you know, I do try my best at it. Um, and you got to just you know, every day is a learning day. You know, everybody says that, and that's it's so true. Like you know, I learn every day. I learn from the students themselves. You know, sometimes in the classroom, a student might know something that I don't know. You know, and I'm, I'm learning from that as well. And mm. um, you know, it's it's good that sense. But no, it's, I say you just come out of your comfort zone, and you got to go with it. To what extent did Jim McGuinness inspire all this? I wonder. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He's um, uh, Jim has been a big part of. Um, you know, he's been a huge, what would I say, role model for me. Um, you know, he, he got to know him very well. Well, I played with him when he was finishing his career. Um, didn't know him as well. He came in then, 2011, like, and I got, you know, getting to see the real Jim McGuinness, seeing what he's all about, his belief in us, um, his belief in me. And I worked, I was very close to him when he was when he w was in with us. And um, yeah, he's, he's got on to bigger and better things now himself. It's frankly so. unbelievable what he's managed but to do with his career and his life and what yeah. he's been. Yeah. You, know, you just yeah. would have said it's not possible to do yeah. what you've done. that's it. It's, it's again, it's about you know, it's how driven you are, you know, how much they enjoy it. Mm. You know, we, I'm sure Jim knows he doesn't know everything in soccer either, but he's coming out of his comfort zone as well and he's really going after it. And yeah. um, I guess I kind of asked that because, you know, as an exercise in realising your potential, or potential maybe you didn't even know you had, the Jim McGinnis, Stunny Cole journey is almost 
beyond anything you've seen in GA in a long time. You know, you guys were just not being talked about in those terms of All Ireland winners and how quickly you got to that point. Mm. It must have been an amazing thing. I mean, I know you look. You were winning All Stars even before Jim arrived, so you were on a personal level doing very well. I know, but it must have been an amazing thing to be in the midst of a team who were gone from written off, you know, maybe win an Ulster tops, that might be the, the kind of full scale of the ambitions, to, frankly, looking unbeatable across 2012 and, and winning in Ireland in such brilliant fashion. Like, to be in the midst of all that as the thing is flourishing must have been unbelievable. Yeah, when you're in the midst of it, it's, you don't, you know, you're just caught up in this little bubble. Um, you don't notice as much as happening? You, no, you right? do not. No, you don't. You just, you know, every day you're just, you're trying to become better and, um, as I say, you're just, Every day is different. You're just going training. You're winning games. You're maybe going into an ulcer final. You're winning an ulcer final. You, you don't have time to stop and look back and say, "What's happening here?" What's happening here? Yeah, it's just you know, it's, I'm probably somebody that has never looked back. You know, since you know, even looked over my career, um, you know, I haven't looked back that much on it. I'm mm -hmm. just somebody who keeps looking forward and looking forward and and um, say you're you're caught up in all of that. Um, there will be a time where I do maybe look back and go, geez, what was that all about? Or, you know, that must have been amazing. And it was at the time. Mm. It, it, it was. Yeah. And I guess I'm just, you know, you, that must be quite an inspirational thing, even if you're caught up in it as well. But you know what's going on and maybe that's what makes you go, well, do you know what, I'm going to have a crack at my career now and yeah. anything's possible. I just I'm probably adding two and two up here together. But you just wonder if going through something like that yeah. makes you think, well, I'm going to apply that to my career. I wonder if, if that crossed your mind. Um, no, it hasn't really. Okay. No, it hasn't really, no. no. Yeah, you were just going to play on either way. Play on, yeah, exactly. Uh, you were player of the year in 2012. Um, was that your kind of peak, do you feel? or? Uh, I suppose so, yeah. Yes. Um, you're, you're playing on a bigger stage, so you were. Mm. Um, you know, Performance-wise, I was probably in the best shape I've, I ever was in. I was injury-free 2012. Um, and you know, I knew... I took the belief out of 2011, mm. and that we are a serious team here. You know, we can really go mm. and achieve big things, and it probably drove me over the winter months to be to get into the shape I did get in, and right. um, you know, the mental side of things too. That I had the belief that you know we can win the All Ireland here, and that drove me, drove me as well. So mm. probably looking back, it probably has been was my peak. Yeah. Was there hip surgery at the end of that year? At the end of 2012, then there was, yeah. Is, yeah. Th is that the toll it takes on us? It probably was, yeah. Right. Yeah, it probably was, yeah. 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 I guess yeah, you have to push yourself, as you said, beyond the comfort zone. It's going to take a toll. Yeah, you just, that's every day. You just do whatever you can. And, um, you know, in injuries don't, if you can get onto that pitch for 20 minutes, if you can get on for 40 minutes, mm. you're going to get on and try and do whatever little bit you can of it. And, you know, it's maybe. 20 minutes of running if you're not allowed to get if you're, you're not able to get involved in the full session mm. you know, you're still going to get onto the sideline you're going to be you know, challenging your physios your doctors you know, what can I do here can I get on a bike can I get into the pool um, and that's the way it was for me you just had had to get every little ounce out of yourself right so you did so are you this kind of driven in most aspects of your life um yeah. Flipping the Monopoly board when you lose that. I, um, yeah, I'm, I would be fairly competitive with a lot, a lot of things. But I did out, yeah. It's not the well-adjusted adult type tends to do well at sport. That seems to be the way. Yeah. Um, the weekend went very well, obviously, against Tyrone. You're working as defensive coach largely now, did I read? Stephen Rochford's almost like head coach. I mean, who knows what the terms are in G anymore, but is that yeah. how the order the works? The structure would be something like that, yeah. So Declan would be, Declan, obviously the manager, and then Stephen would do all the coaching, um, and then I would look at maybe working, breaking it down a wee bit more in terms of our defensive system and looking at our defenders and working with them more closely on an individual and maybe as a collective, as a group as well. And So like tackling, like that kind of stuff, and, that. and how we're covering overlaps, how we're covering different scenarios, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And that worked a treat at the weekend, it seems. Everybody was talking about how brilliantly Donegal shut Tyrone down. Uh, talk to us about what you did and how you dreamt it up. <laughs> I, uh, In so much as you can, I know you can't give all the details. Not that but we didn't. It seems like you played with certainly a sweeper and for the full back. You, you were very aware that Tyrone this year have been kicking more. Yeah. And you decided to make that more difficult for them. I think we can 
extrapolate that much from watching on TV. So that that must they must have been the types of conversations you guys were having. Yeah, and that's it. Like, and you obviously you look at the opposition, see what their strengths are, and then you, know, you, you break that down. And how do we counteract that? And then um, you know you said it there, thrown over a past majority of the league, they've been kicking a lot of ball. Yeah. Um, Cal McShane's been very, playing very well, Matty Donnelly's been in there pretty hard, you know, and they were playing very well, so that was one area that we thought, well, we need if we can shut this down, then we have a good chance of winning the game. It's not going to win us the game, mm. but we need to you know, sh- shut it down. And one thing throwing very strong at as well is running down the middle of our defence, you know, right down the centre. Um, you know, we knew that you know, if we had that closed off, closed off on yeah. top of Donnelly, Hart, and like Shane, then you know, we're, there's a good chance we could get over the line here. So, yeah, it's interesting. You know, you're going to meet different challenges along the way, and Tyrone like to kick the ball equally. If you were playing at Dublin, for instance, and you had dropped back a bit and got numbers back in those kind of positions you're talking about, they would be calm as you like. They would understand. Okay, we've seen this picture lots of times. Let's spread the play out. Let's have men on the touchline. Let's be patient. And yeah. you know, they picked Tyrone off in a semi-final two years ago. You know, they made a similar picture and, and just knew what to do. How do you counteract that? Then that's another kind of challenge. Do you get in their faces more? Uh, do you try and press them higher up the field? These are the kind of things you have to figure out. Yeah, that's the one. And as you say, I'll figure them out when time comes. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is called keeping your cards close to your chest. Yeah. yeah Are you? Yeah. Are you trying to figure them out now as a matter of interest? Are you thinking about these things a lot now? Ah, yes. That's for Manor would have dropped back. Yeah, know? that's not yeah, exactly. That's, and it's not just Dublin that you want to face. Like maybe now, look at Cavan, mm. what way are they played? Are we going to play the exact same as we played against their own? Probably not. You know, we're going to have to adapt and change things. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, and that's a great thing about the game at, at the moment. Like it's, it's evolving. It's, um, you know, players have to become more versatile. Yeah. Tactics have to be more adaptable you know you have to change things you know even after 10 minutes something well, might be working you have to go well well if Tyrone stopped kicking in that game exactly you would have had to react I presume yeah. did you have those conversations if that happens let's do well, this you know you're hoping as coaches you've all these scenarios yeah. nailed and it's not it's too late then 10 minutes in the game to run on say boys we, we have go to go there you go yeah, there yeah, yeah exactly so it's you know, boys it's plan B it's plan C plan D you know, that's what we're going to do here but you know, that takes hours and hours on the training so. ground as well is it that detail now that there would be a plan C even and a plan D Ah oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. There's yeah, you have to go different yeah. defensive structures and different yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. The amount of man hours. What are you putting in a week? Yeah, it's it's one area I thought that um you know, stepping off and playing, I thought maybe it mightn't mean as time consuming, but it's actually it's more time consuming um, in terms of analysis, you know, breaking things down. Mm. But you know, I, I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't enjoying it. So you're hitting the video hard and watching games back and all that kind of oh, yeah. fun. Yeah, you got to do all that. Yeah. yeah. Does it work that you will almost sit down with, say, Stephen Rochford and uh, Declan, and they'll almost say, "All right, defensive coach, give us your plan," or is it a bit more of a? That's ah, very much together. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's very much not one person makes any one call on anything. It's you know, we we throw out our ideas mm. together, and I'm sure this happens across all teams. We're not the only team that maybe focus on defence and attack. Everybody's oh, no. got their. Special coaches in. Um, I guess it can depend on personalities. You might have a very strong defensive coach. You'll say, "This is this what we way, do." Yeah. So every team's going to work differently. You yeah. look fit this year, I have to say. Like it looks like a team. You know, I mean, look, Tyrone maybe had a bit of an off day in some ways, but geez, you looked a yard faster than them as well, and sharp, and in in good fettle. Yeah, yeah, we'd be happy in terms of our physical um, and where we're at. We've got young lads, young leg, legs in there as well. Helps. You know, it helps as well. So it does. Um, but listen, we're just going to take each game as it comes. Um, as you said there, we don't really know where to run rat. Mm. Okay, and we can't read too much into it. We just have to look after our own um, house and you know, say hit the training ground again now and just try and improve and try to become better. Mm. Tactically, you know, on game plan, try to become better physically, and let's try and get a wee bit more fitness levels in, um, and we'll see where that takes us this year. I suspect you're not going to tell me what the aims were if they uh, were written down, but did the team get together at the start of the year and say, we want to do X this year? Maybe win in All Ireland, maybe get to semi final, maybe get to Super 8s, whatever it is. Do you sit down as a group and, and put those targets in? Like, is that what, say, Jim McGuinness did? Or is it more of a, well, let's take each day as it comes? Yeah, that you would have broad, you, know, you like, months. let's maybe aim, let's aim for an Ulster final, and let's go from there, let's maybe see if we can get into the Super 8s, let's take it, take it that approach. Mm. Um, you know, but yeah, you can't look 
past you know, any one game and I know it's an old cliche and everybody you talk to will say that. Yeah, it's literally the most boring thing you could ever say to me. Yeah. But there's a truth in it, I know. There is, yeah, absolutely. And it's funny, like after the National League, we have six, seven weeks to prepare mm. for the for Manning game and then that game's over and then you've only 13 days to prepare yeah. for an Ulster semi-final. It's going to be a bigger game. You against get on the treadmill team. quickly then. So then it's, yeah. it happens so quick, so it does. Yeah, and you're not going to know you have to look at Cavan six weeks ago the way you are now. Yeah, just now, exactly. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Are you enjoying it all? Are you, have you realised, um, I guess you had a suspicion that coaching was for you and you can get a wonderful buzz from imparting knowledge and teaching people and you can see why lots of people have it as a vocation. Is it what you hoped it would be and are you seeing yourself being involved in management down the line and coaching down the line for the next 10, 20, 30 years? Yeah, that's not an aware. I'm really going to go with it to be honest. Right. Um, it was, that's happened really quick for me. I finished 2017 and... Yeah. You're coaching your Declan, friends really, aren't you? Yeah, a lot of them would be, yeah. yeah. And Declan rang me and I met him and... Um, I wasn't sure was he trying to convince me to go back playing, and <laughs> that wasn't the case. That was a little blow to the ego, and he said, <laughs> yeah, "No, no, yeah. I definitely don't want you playing." But uh, yeah, he asked like a nice whatever. I don't know what the type of role was that he wanted, so I wanted that well defined. What exactly is it you want from me? Mm. And it was more kind of just come in and you know, from past experience, just help them younger lads, in which we have a lot of them in there, and so any wee bits of advice and knowledge that I can pass on to them and do that and mm. you know, it's kind of evolved and kind of getting more hands on now in terms of analysis and stuff but you know Declan's been involved in management for a long time and I'm learning from him Stephen Rashford now this year you know, huge amount of experience in terms mm. of coaching I'm learning so much from him and, and when you're learning things from them because like obviously you're an experienced player you've been a player the best player in the country across the season four all-stars when you're learning from them like are you learning Structures? Are you learning different defensive setups, different attacking setups, different tactical side of things, or are you learning how you actually coach someone and impart knowledge? Yeah, it's both. Is it? Yeah. Both, so you, yeah, you wouldn't have all the answers to all the systems, even though you played for a long time. No, and I wouldn't have all the answers to tackling either. Right. You know, maybe, and that's a big challenge for me is you know, being able to tackle. For me, when I was playing, maybe it just came natural to me. Okay, I'd never overthinked about tackling. Yes. And then the players come to you now, well, what am I doing wrong here? Was it my feet positions and my hands? And you kind of have to break that down. You have mm. to think a lot more about it. It's like um, a golfer who doesn't know how they swing a club and yeah, like, to yeah, ask them, yeah. yeah. And then trying to get your point across and you know, on what you're trying to say to them in yeah. terms of coaching and getting them to understand that then is another challenge. Big skill that, to, it is, yeah. to communicate really well. Yeah, and then play up. Everybody's different. Yeah. You know, they take messages different ways, and you have to adjust to that. And your people skills and different personalities. And Sean Dyche, uh, for a while, wore a recorder on his um, a little, little lapel mic for when he was having meetings with players, yeah. and afterwards would listen back to his communication and would realise, oh, oh, that wasn't very clear what I said there, or I didn't put that very well, because it's just that difficult yeah, yeah. to get what's in your head out all the time. That's really it, well. yeah, and it sounds brilliant in your own head. Then when you say it to somebody yeah. else and they're looking at you, what are you on about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so oh, did you not know, know, you know what I mean? Saying, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, well listen, it's great to have you in. It's fantastic to see you still involved in the game at a high level and it's great to have Donegal doing well. So, Ulster final next? Ulster final now, yeah. So we're looking forward to the big day. It's always a great occasion. Um, I've been lucky enough to be involved as a player in a mm. couple. I've been lucky enough to win. Um, I've been on the losing side as well. So it's, it's always a big occasion and um, it's great to be there. And Calvin, um, it's going to be a great spectacle. They'll so. be up for it, yeah. It'll be yeah. a good day out. Listen, keep it going. Carl Lacey, pleasure. Thanks. Thank you very much.